this is Dr. Amherd Nichols, and this is the new FDA approvals podcast covering the latest approvals from the FDA from June 24th through the 28th, 2024. And this comes out weekly. If you are in the healthcare industry, pharmaceutical industry, medical writer, please tell your colleagues about this podcast. Thank you so much. All right. First up this week, the FDA has approved encephentrine, also called Otuver, as an inhaled maintenance therapy for adults with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Otuver is the first therapy with a new mechanism of action to win approval for COPD in over two decades. This non-steroidal molecule possesses both anti-inflammatory and bronchodilatory effects, which are anticipated to enhance lung function, alleviate symptoms, and diminish the risk of exacerbations in patients with COPD, while avoiding the side effects commonly associated with inhaled corticosteroids. COPD is a chronic inflammatory lung condition characterized by progressive airway narrowing and inflammation, leading to symptoms such as shortness of breath, coughing, and wheezing, which worsen over time. The approval of this agent was based on findings from Phase 3, Enhance 1, and Enhance 2 trials, which included over 1,400 participants with moderate to severe COPD. The trials demonstrated that encephentrine significantly improved forced expiratory volume in one second, FEV1, compared to placebo after 12 weeks, with the effect persisting through six months. Additionally, patients treated with encephentrine experienced fewer exacerbations. The approval of encephentrine was granted to Verona Pharma. Also this week, the FDA approved Theotipa, also called Tepilute, for the treatment of patients with breast cancer or ovarian cancer. Tepilute is a novel, ready-to-dilute formulation that eliminates the need for reconstitution, thereby saving clinicians preparation time and reducing the risks associated with drug preparation. Theotipa is an alkylating agent first approved in the U.S. in 1959, that works by attaching to DNA strands in cancer cells, preventing their division and proliferation. This new formulation is expected to offer benefits for medical personnel and patients, including less invasive treatment options and more consistent dosing. Breast cancer affects one in eight women in the United States expected to be diagnosed in their lifetimes. Advances in early detection and treatment have significantly increased survival rates for breast cancer, Ovarian cancer has poor outcomes due to late detection and lack of routine screening options with a five-year relative survival rate of 50.8%. The approval of Tepilute was based on findings that emphasize its ease of preparation and administration. The approval of Eotipa Tepilute was granted to Amnil Pharmaceuticals. Also last week, the FDA approved Epcoridumab BYSP, also called Epkinley, for the treatment of adults with relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma, RRFL, after two or more lines of prior therapy. Epkinley is the first and only T-cell engaging bispecific antibody for this indication, providing a new option for patients with limited treatment options. Bispecific antibodies such as Epcoridumab are designed to induce targeted cell killing by engaging the immune system. Follicular lymphoma is an indolent form of non-Hodgkin lymphoma arising from B lymphocytes and represents the second most common form of non-Hodgkin lymphoma, accounting for 20 to 30 percent of cases. Follicular lymphoma is considered incurable with current standard therapies and many patients face relapse and reduce survival. The approval of Epkinley was based on findings from the Phase 1 to Epcor NHL 1 clinical trial. The study included 127 adult patients with relapsed refractory follicular lymphoma who previously received a median of three lines of therapy. The trial demonstrated an overall response rate of 82% with a complete response rate of 60% and a partial response rate of 22% at a median follow-up of 14.8 months more than half of the respondents maintained their response. The approval of Epcaridumab BYSP was granted to ABV. Also last week, the FDA approved Sofpironium topical gel 12.45%, also called Softra, for the treatment of primary axillary hyperhidrosis in adults and children aged 9 years and older. This approval marks the first for Softra, an anticholinergic agent that inhibits the action of acetylcholine on sweat glands, reducing sweat production. Primary axillary hyperhidrosis is characterized by excessive sweating in the underarm area, significantly impacting the quality of life. 
The approval was based on findings from two phase three studies that involved 710 patients with primary axillary hyperhidrosis. In these trials, patients treated with soft drug topical gel experienced clinically and statistically significant improvements in various scores designed to measure hyperhidrosis. The approval of soft drug was granted to Botanix Pharmaceuticals, which plans to make the product available with sales to begin in the fourth quarter of 2024. And now a word from the supporter of this podcast, Nascent Medical. Attention all businesses in need of exceptional medical writing support. Nascent Medical is the solution. We are a team of skilled MD and PhD level medical writers who specialize in fast turnaround needs assessments, manuscripts, slide decks, ad board summaries, and much, much more. Don't settle for anything less than excellence when it comes to your medical writing assistance. If you're a continuing medical education company, we can really help you. Visit nascentmc.com. That's nascentmc.com. We're here so that you never have to be without excellent medical writing help. That's nascentmc.com. Also this week, the FDA approved Pitolisat, also called Wakex, for the treatment of excessive daytime sleepiness, EDS, in a pediatric patient six years of age and older with narcolepsy. Pitolisat was first approved by the FDA in August 2019 for the treatment of EDS in adult patients with narcolepsy, followed by approval for the treatment of cataplexy in adult patients with narcolepsy in October 2020. Pitolisat is a first-in-class treatment that functions as a selective H3 receptor antagonist, inverse agonist, targeting the histamine system to promote wakefulness. Narcolepsy is a rare, chronic, debilitating neurologic disease of sleep-wake state instability, affecting approximately 170,000 Americans, primarily characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness with or without cataplexy, and other manifestations of REM sleep dysregulation, such as hallucinations and sleep paralysis. The approval was based on findings from a phase three study which evaluated the safety and efficacy of ptilisent in patients aged six to under 18 years with narcolepsy, with or without cataplexy. The approval of ptilisent was granted to Harmony Biosciences. Also last week, the FDA approved crobalamab, AKKZ, also called PSGI, for the treatment of adult and pediatric patients 13 years of age and older with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, also called PNH, and body weight of at least 40 kilograms. PNH is a rare and life-threatening blood condition characterized by the destruction of red blood cells by the body's complement system, leading to symptoms such as anemia, fatigue, blood clots, and potential kidney disease. Crovalimab AKKT is a complement C5 inhibitor that is recycled within the bloodstream, enabling sustained complement inhibition through low-dose administration every four weeks. The approval of PSKY was based on its efficacy in maintaining complement inhibition, with administration involving an initial intravenous infusion on day one, followed by four weekly subcutaneous injections and maintenance dosing every four weeks. The FDA granted the approval of PSKY to Genentech, Inc. Also, last week, the FDA approved f Alpha and Hyaluronidase QVFC, the combination known as Vigart Hytrulo, for the treatment of chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, CIDP, in adults, Vivgard Hytrulo was previously approved for the treatment of adults with generalized myasthenia gravis who are anti-acetylcholine receptor antibody positive. Vivgard Hytrulo is a neonatal FC receptor blocker and hyaluronidase is an endoglycosidase. CIDP is a rare immune-mediated inflammatory peripheral nerve disorder that affects the myelin sheaths, the fatty coverings on nerve fibers that insulate and protect the nerves. Symptoms include progressive weakening of the arms and legs, numbness and tingling, impaired balance, and difficulty walking. CIDP is more common in men and typically affects individuals in their 50s and 60s. The approval was based on the effectiveness demonstrated in a two-stage multicenter study. In this study, the open-label period identified patients who showed improvement with Vivgar Hytrulo, who then entered a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial 
In the second stage, 221 patients were randomized to receive weekly subcutaneous injections of Vivgar Hytrula or placebo. Patients treated with this agent experienced a statistically significant longer time to clinical deterioration compared to those who received a placebo. The FDA granted the approval of Bibcar Hytrulo to Argenx. Also, last week, the FDA granted fast track designation to IBI 343 for the treatment of patients with advanced, unresectable, or metastatic pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, PDAC, that has relapsed and or is refractory to one prior line of therapy. Previously, the FDA approved the investigational new drug application for IBI-343 for the treatment of PDAC. IBI-343 is a recombinant monoclonal antibody drug conjugate directed against Claudin 18.2. It binds to Claudin 18.2 expressing tumor cells leading to ADC internalization and subsequent release of its active drug, TOP1i which induces DNA damage and apoptosis in tumor cells. Top 1i can also exert a bystander killing effect on neighboring cells. PDAC is a highly malignant and difficult to diagnose cancer with limited treatment options, particularly for patients who have failed first-line therapies. The fast-track designation was based on findings from a phase one trial, which demonstrated an overall response rate of 40% in patients with PDAC, who had Claudine 18.2 expression and received IBI 343 every three weeks. Among these patients, two achieved a confirmed partial response. The approval of IBI 343 was granted to Innovant Biologics. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. And if you are in the healthcare industry or you are a medical writer, then go to learnamastyle.com. That's learnamastyle.com for a bunch of free downloads. I have a course, a free course on AI in medical writing and editing that will help you speed up writing that manuscript or grant. Very useful for many of us who really have a lot of time spent writing. So please check that out, learnamastyle.com. AMA style is the primary style guide that we use in this industry. So even if you work with writers, it's good to know, you know, make sure they're implementing AMA style. So anyway, go to learnamastyle.com. All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much. Be back next Monday.